Welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Today I have two guests and I'm very, very excited having them on our show because they come from a center called Response and that's empowering teens to make healthy life choices. I'd like to read a little bit and then I will introduce my guests. I want to talk about uh, what response is and what response is is being a teen today in a world that is not easy, believe me, between the increasing peer pressure and the feeling that there is nowhere to turn for real answers. Uh, adolescence often feels like a maze complete with tough decisions, turns, and obstacles. Response, that's the center that we're going to be talking about today, provides a safe place for teens to speak freely about whatever is on their minds. For over 40 years, we have partnered, and they have partnered with adolescents, family, teachers, social workers, community centers, and other mental health uh, providers to help teens and their parents find solutions that work for them. And I'm very, very excited. First of all, I, I like to read, I introduce Robin Stein. Hi, Robin. Hi, Suzanne. And Thank she you. is the director of the Response Center, and Marnie Spiegel, who is also the coordinator of the Center of Sexual Health. Hi, Marty. Hi. And okay. you, we, we have a lot to accomplish <laughs> in a half an hour. So we're going to have to get this on the road, so to speak. And so we need to talk about what is the Response Center. And, um, we, and it was something that it's, it, it's out of Skokie, I believe, but it's for, it's for everybody. It's, and it's the best little kept secret you were telling me because I never heard of it before. And I wish I did because I could have made loads of referrals prior <laughs> to wonderful. meeting you today. So I'm going to start with you, Robin. Sure. Tell our viewers a little bit about what is the Response Center. Absolutely. So uh, Response is a program of Jewish Child and Family Services, and we are actually their adolescent program. So we serve ages 12 to 24. And they don't have to be Jewish? They do not have to okay. be Jewish, no. Okay, they can be Christian. Good question, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, we absolutely serve everyone. <clears throat> um, we have three main programs. Uh, we have counseling, so we provide individual mm -hmm. family and group counseling on site at Response. Um, we also have a fairly large outreach and prevention uh, department and they do experiential interactive education in schools, synagogues, other home houses of worship, up at camps. Um, there's a variety of topics that they speak to and really um, interact with teens about that are and, and we're going to get to those yes, topics absolutely. too because there's a loads of topics that um, that you know that uh, come under this program. Definitely. And you so you are you're the director of the program and you get everything together Hi. for you're the one that <laughs> puts hope. basically everything huh. together. And Marnie, you're tell me something about what you do. It's a center for sexual health mm -hmm. program at Response. And we're talking about, so, uh, these are for kids that are 12 and 12. up to 24. Yes. And so um, I, maybe I'm, I'm smiling because I probably didn't even, uh, I probably didn't even hear the word sex until I was about 12 <laughs> years old. Yeah. I think I lived in a maze or something. <laughs> but um, what, what, is, what, what exactly you do for, you know, as a coordinator? Yeah, so the third component of Response Center is the Center for Sexual Health. And we have a nurse practitioner come in twice a week to provide comprehensive, confidential sexual health care for adolescents and young adults. And uh, I think I, 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 we were having lunch a little bit earlier, and um, we talked about um, what, what is it that, you know, um, we, we talked about the HIPAA laws. And the HIPAA laws, um, they provide a, you know, so that you can't discuss uh, actually with parents, correct, of what, um, I think I had something on HIPAA laws here, with the HIPAA law is a privacy rule which sets rules and regulations and limits who can look at your health records, and that I know that's for Illinois, correct? Yes. And um, so, is a 12-year-old, um, and they have a sexual problem, you don't have to tell the parents? Um, that was kind of something that I was kind of surprised. Yeah. And I'm going to let you both talk about uh, whoever wants to talk up start. 
Sure, I think that surprises most people. I don't think that most people are aware that after the age of 12, uh, an individual can autonomously receive sexual health care without parent permission um, or just even parent notification. So this is a law that was really set in place to protect young individuals who may not be able to talk to their parents about sexuality, sexual health care, making healthy life choices in terms of their sexual health care. Either they would not be safe at home or they would not be welcome back at home if they their parents knew that they were receiving this this care. Interesting because um, like if they had something, they, they were on other medications for instance and you gave <coughs> them um, birth control or they had an infection of right. some kind, how does that, how, you know, should the parents know about it or or how does how does that work? You, either one of you want to. So we have we have a, a medical professional who's there who can monitor um, all medications that an individual is on. We ask each client who comes through our doors a really extensive. Um, sort of intake process where we get all of the information of not just other medications that they're putting in their body but all substances that they are putting in their body so that we can make sure that they are being monitored and the medication is not adversely affecting them. That's interesting. So you have a whole, you have a, a nurse practitioner that comes exactly. and if they need a physician they can be referred to a physician yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's interesting and the parents really don't know what's uh, happening? Most of them not. Um, I should mention that that's a partnership we have with Sinai Health Systems that we've had for 40 plus years. So they um, provide the medical provider, all of our supplies, um, birth control pills, all of that. Um, so it's a very um, strong partnership. Uh, and I think all of our clinicians work very hard with younger teens to make sure that um, they're encouraged to share with their parents, encouraged to share information, and, and some of them do. Some come into the Center for Sexual Health with their parents or guardians. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes, do they feel safe after a while to, you, you know, some parents, well, if I heard that, you have to, you gotta leave, you know. Um, do, you, do you talk to the parents and, the, you know, and, and to, you know, to get them involved in their children's life? Maybe a child comes to the center and they're afraid that their parents are gonna be angry at them. Mm -hmm. and, and after maybe you talk to the parents, they find that their parents, you know, actually, uh, won't throw them out of the house or won't tell them that they, you know, that they're no longer welcome. Uh, do you do that type of thing too? Do, with somehow, what do you do with the parents? How do, you, how do they, how do they reenact with the child? What do you do to get them to respond to their children and their needs? So, in terms of our counseling department, as I said, we provide individual counseling, family, and group. And so, many of our counselors work with the entire family system. Um, they may f see the teenager, and then the next week they may see the parents, and then the next week they might see the whole family in Constellation mm -hmm. together. So it's a variety of different modalities that we're using. Um, and then in the center... Yeah, you know, you know we also to. provide a parent support group mm -hmm. for our counseling department mm -hmm. um, so that we are not only providing support for the adolescents, but also for the whole family, the parents as well. Um, kids don't come with an instruction manual, and so a lot of times we do need help and support um, from professionals and from one another. Um, and in terms of the Center for Sexual Health, we are really trying to engage parents more and more. I've mm -hmm. just developed a program called Beyond the Birds and the Bees, where I speak with parents and their friends. They maybe invite some parents, some of their friends over for coffee and sandwiches or wine and cheese. And I really help them understand the importance of being involved in their child's development and being an approachable parent. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the statistics that we know is that the number one predictor of a child making healthier life choices in terms of their sexual identity and in terms of their sexual health care is parent involvement. And if parents are, if children are feeling like they can talk to their parents, they have a lower right. risk of um, contracting an STI or having an unwanted teen pregnancy. How do you get uh, the kids there in the first place? You know, this sounds like a really um, 
uh, I know my daughter lives in Texas, and she, one of my grandchildren, um, we would like him to go to see a therapy. And he said, oh, he doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. How do you get a child yeah. that, um, and this is good because I'll learn this too, because <laughs> I want to figure out how to get him to therapy. Because he's, a, he's also, he's 17 years old, he was just 17, just started driving, and he can use you know, some help, some support, some support yeah, sure. because, sure. you know, of different circumstances, his, his home circumstances change, you know, sure. parents got divorced and now he's having, you know, uh, and he says, oh, he can handle it on his own. Mm -hmm. How do you get kids in that say that they really need, uh, you could see, you know, the parent or the grandparent, you know, sees that this child can use some help, and, and the child says, oh, that's okay. You know how kids are. I can handle it. I'm not interested. I can handle right. it. You know, they got their telephone, so they probably, you know. <laughs> Googling for Googling, help. yeah. Right. Right. And so what do you do? I think um, one thing about responses, I kind of like to envision it as sort of a trifecta of adolescent services. So on site, we have this, the counseling, the sexual health care, the education. Um, and you might say, why us versus a private practitioner? Mm -hmm. um, I think that you'd have to come to a response to see it, but we're extremely team friendly. So our offices don't look like a typical counseling office. It's, they're very colorful. They have very cozy, shabby chic couches in them, um, client artwork on the wall. Uh, so if we can engage a kid to just get them in the door, and sometimes we'll tell a parent, ask them if they just come once. Mm -hmm. Just if they just try it once. Um, and typically, if they come up our stairs and have the courage to come in and share some things, they're hooked. Mm -hmm. um, the relationship is built, and everyone at Response is really passionate about working with this age population. And I, I think that's where we're a little bit different from other providers. So what you, you, how do you get these, how do they get these kids to know that you exist? You, you mentioned something about you go to schools, but what, what do you actually do and how do you, how do you have an assembly? How, 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 do, what, how do you work with the schools? You come in and what do you tell them? Do you talk to the kids? Do you do it on a, you know, is there an audience there? Okay. Or, or, you <laughs> know, I hope there's an audience. Yes. <laughs> So um, we work uh, very closely with school districts all the way from Lake Forest into the city, into Chicago. Um, and so we have a good, solid reputation for providing cutting edge, um, on trend, interactive programming for teens, mostly high school age, but we do go into middle schools and some elementary. And each time our outreach and prevention team goes into a school, they may be in a classroom. Say How many people are in a team? Like our outreach team, we have three. Three, three okay. staff. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they are, are all working programs all day long at a school. They might start at 7 in the morning and be done at 3 in the afternoon and maybe see all of the freshman health classes, say. Um, so they go in and talk to all the freshmen right mm -hmm. away so they don't pick certain kids because, yeah. you know, kids don't want to be singled out. Absolutely. You know, they, they want right. to do what their peers, you know, uh, right. do. So right. you don't want to... Uh, go in and just, uh, you know, the teacher never says, you better, there's uh, Johnny there, he needs help. You know, <laughs> right. you don't do no. that, right? No, absolutely okay. not. So we are providing general prevention education to um, the teens in their classrooms and then always available afterwards for any questions. The staff put their contact information on the board. Mm -hmm. I guess it's whiteboards now as opposed to chalkboards. Um, and before they start any presentation, they will usually have a, uh, a sentence saying, anybody here know about response? And a couple of hands will usually go up and they'll say, what do you know about it? Um, and sometimes it's the place where we can get free condoms, where they know they can have safe, you know, relationships. But as they talk a little bit further about our services, they tell the kids, you know, we also have counseling. And you can come in for five sessions without, that's another law actually, um, without parental knowledge or consent. Um, or, you know, we can come into your school or your synagogue or your camp and provide these programs for you. Um, and we also have a Center for Sexual Health where you can have confidential uh, information and, and um, you know, share what's going on in your life. Why, why, don't, what, why are kids so afraid of talking to their parents? That's kind of interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, there are all these services, you, you know, you can follow the HIPAA laws, you know, that we don't have to discuss, they don't have to discuss with their parents. Why are they so afraid to talk to their parents? I think it depends on, on the parents. One of the reasons why we're really starting to focus on these parent education um, and parent support groups is to really help parents be